Hello, my name is Frank Christensen and I'm the coordinator of officials for IFAF in Europe. This is the first of five training tapes on defensive pass interference. Today we're looking at the cutoff category. So we'll have a look at some film and see how to recognize it, when it happens in relation to, to when the ball arrives. But before we get to the game film, let's have a look to see what the MOFO and the rulebook have to say on this topic. In the rulebook, we go to rule 738, defensive pass interference. C, defensive pass interference is contact beyond the neutral zone by a Team B player whose intent to impede an eligible opponent is obvious and could prevent the opponent the opportunity of receiving a catchable forward pass. When in question, a legal forward pass is catchable. Defensive pass interference occurs only after a legal forward pass is thrown. It is not pass interference. One, when after the snap, opposing players immediately charge and establish contact with opponent at a point that is within one yard beyond the neutral zone. Two, when two or more eligible players are making a simultaneous and bona fide attempt to reach, catch, or bat the pass. Eligible players of either team have equal rights to the ball. Three, when a Team B player legally contacts an opponent before the pass is thrown. And finally, four, when there is contact by a Team B player that otherwise would be pass interference during a down in which a Team A potential kicker from scrimmage kick formation simulates a scrimmage kick by throwing the ball high and deep. In the MOFO, we go to 3-3 three, three contact fouls. 8. Defensive pass interference. A. Actions that constitute defensive pass interference include 1. Not playing the ball. Early contact by a defender who is not playing the ball that impedes or restricts the receiver's opportunity to make the catch. 2. Playing through an opponent. Playing through the receiver, for example, contacting him in the back or on the side of him furthest from the ball, even if attempting to play the ball. 3. Grabbing an arm. Grabbing the receiver's arm in a manner that restricts his op opportunity to catch a pass. 4. Armbar. Extending an arm across the receiver's body to impede his ability to catch the pass, whether or not the defender is playing the ball. And 5. Cutoff, which is the topic of this training tape. Cutting off a receiver, uh, riding him out of the path to the ball by making contact with him without playing the ball. For example, before uh, the defender looks for the ball. And finally, six, hook and turn. Hooking a receiver around the waist that causes his body to turn prior to or even slightly after the ball arriving, even if the defender is trying to get to the ball. B, actions that do not constitute defensive pass interference include, one, incidental contact by a defender's hands arms or body in the act of moving to the ball that does not materially affect the route of the receiver. If in doubt as to whether the route was materially affected, there is no p interference. 2. Inadvertent tangling of feet when both or neither players are playing the ball. 3. Contact that occurs during a pass that is clearly uncatchable by the involved players. 4. Laying a hand on the receiver that does not turn or impede him until after the ball has arrived. 5. Contact on a Hail Mary pass unless it is clear and conspicuous pass interference. C. Further notes. 1. A stationary player in position to catch the ball who is displaced from his position has been fouled. 2. It is never pass interference if the defensive player touches the ball before contacting the opponent. Three, interference must be conspicuous to be called. Four, remember that the defense has as much right to the ball as the offense. Five, 
it is crucial to identify which players are playing the ball and which are not. Six, normally an offensive receiver will try to catch the ball with two hands. Often a defender will try to bat or deflect the ball with only one hand. If the defender goes up with only one hand, know what the other one is doing. Seven, when judging whether a pass is catchable, imagine how far the receiver could have run and how high or wide he could have jumped if he had not been impeded. And finally, eight, there is no foul when contact is simultaneous with the ball being touched, the bang-bang situation. When in doubt, contact is simultaneous with the ball being touched. And that was the theory. Now, let's have a look at some game film. On this first clip, there's a number of things to, to notice. First, we'll look at the at the umpire pre-snap. Now, typically, uh, we'd ask the umpires to be, you know, five, six, seven yards deep. Here, he's a little bit too deep uh, at, at eight or nine. He could move back or, or move up a, a little bit. There are no linebackers in the way, so so it wouldn't uh, hinder his ability to, to officiate the play. Now let's have a look at the at the at the trips here at the bottom. So right now we'd have the uh, the deep wing on the outside receiver, then the wing, and finally the back judge on the inside. And as they move off the line of scrimmage here, as soon as they cross, we'd ask the uh, the back judge to switch his keys and pick up number 27, who's coming into his area. And then the inside receiver is going outside. Now, typically that would then turn into the wing key. But since uh, the, the outside receiver, number 16 here, stays back, we'd, we'd, at the same time we'd ask the wing to pick up 16. And then that would, of course, mean that the deep wing should take uh, the last receiver, the, the receiver here at the 25-yard line, who is running into that zone. So pretty uh, quickly we'd go from, from key to, to zone and pick up who is in our zone. And right here is when the ball is being thrown. You can see in the pocket uh, there the ball is, is being released. So now the ball is in the air. And here we've got a clear uh, clear contact initiated by the defense. This is a, a, a type of cutoff and the ball ends up being intercepted. Now you could say the receiver is 10 yards away, but uh, I think uh, since it happens so early the ball is in the air had this contact not happened the receiver certainly would have had a chance to get to the ball so um, hopefully we're able to to uh, to make this key shift so that we catch this and 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 we need to call this as a, as a dpi cutoff now since we've got a turnover uh, Go ahead and, and, and make sure. Now, we don't have a flag here. So when we don't have a flag, we'd like the deep wing here to uh, come up, kill the clock, good job, and then signal direction since we do have a, ch uh, a chance of possession, a, a turnover. If we had had a flag, let's say the, the deep wing here had a flag for DPI, we would not want her to signal direction since we know that we have a flag on the defense, just like we wouldn't signal a touchdown if we know we have an offensive foul on, a, on an apparent scoring play. Uh, but in any case, this should have been called as a DPI. In this play, we're looking at the uh, what ends up being the deep wings key. So the guy coming uh, the receiver coming down the sideline here or, or closer to the sideline and this is this is more of uh, this closer to what we're looking for in in a classical cutoff but we'll we'll have a look at at why this actually ends up being legal so we have um, we have the receiver here coming down the field we've got the cornerback here now it, it's certainly what we're looking for here for a cutoff is is the receiver getting into the path or, or the cornerback getting into the path of the receiver and slowing down and it certainly looks like that's what he's doing here um, but we also have a good shot of the ball here and the ball is actually already past the players 
when the contact happens, which is why we can't go ahead and rule this as a legal play. But this certainly is, had, had the contact happened just a, a, a fraction of a second earlier, we certainly could have had a, um, a flag for, for pass interference here because I do think it's, it's fairly obvious that the cornerback is not looking at the ball anymore. He's just trying to get in the receiver's way and, and preventing him uh, or cutting him off from his route uh, but again, legal because of the timing of it. Now, mechanically, uh, we wouldn't want the deep wing to be on the field of play. Uh, we have this di a nice uh, two-yard uh, cushion off the field where we can uh, where we can move around. So let's let's try to stay off the field. Also, you know, sometimes when this happens, the deep wing will be will be straight lined, and he won't actually be able to see the contact and see when it happens. So a lot of times, you know, the back judge will have a better angle at what's going on. So he might also be able to, to see what's going on. And, you know, right now the back judge should be moving away from his initial key and coming over to these uh, two players and certainly should have enough time to come around to see this and see what's going on. But again, you know, just looking at the players, it certainly looks uh, suspicious, but because of the timing and the ball already being gone, uh, we can let this one go. On this play, we're looking at the middle receiver in the trips uh, at the top of the screen. And he's going to go down the field here, and then you'll notice the, the cornerback there kind of gets in his way and, and slows down. So that is really the, the indicator, if you will. He's, he may be looking for the ball, but really you can tell by his upper body that he's leaning into the receiver. Really his, his primary intention there, uh, the way I see it, is to stop uh, the receiver. If he were going for the ball genuinely, he would not be leaning into the receiver like that, creating contact, making sure the receiver certainly didn't get to the to the spot. Now, the last thing, or, or, or uh, I mean, it's a it's a good call by the back judge to to get around. Um, the only thing I would say is that the contact happens about there on the 35, and here comes the flag, and that lands on the. Uh, on the 28, 29. So the flag is a little bit off and, and we do want to make sure or, or do what we can to get the flag to the correct spot, uh, even though in this case it's kind of tough. But in any case, you know, once you see the uh, the cornerback like this leaning into to the receiver, anticipating the contact, that is the indicator that he is he's cutting off the receiver. On this next play, we're looking at the receiver across the field, and you'll notice how the cornerback never looks back uh, until he makes contact and just kind of rides the receiver out of bounds. And, and you know, if he, if he were going for the ball, that'd be one thing, but here he's just, the ball is in the air, and now he's initiating contact, uh, riding the receiver out of bounds, essentially cutting him off from, from a possibility to get to the ball. Now, you can you can argue that the ball actually lands out of bounds but it lands so close to the sideline that had the receiver not been uh, forced out of bounds he certainly would have had a chance to to make this catch so so this is this is the kind of thing that we're looking for in a in a defensive pass interference cutoff Here we're looking at the receiver at the top of the screen, the deep wing key, so in this case the side judge key. And as we'll see, the ball is in the air and he's not given the opportunity to cut outside again. So uh, had, had the ball not been in the air, this contact would be perfectly legal, but now the ball is in the air and here he's just being contacted and not being given a chance to get to the ball and, and, and the cornerback really doesn't make a bona fide attempt until the very end to go for the ball. So this is, uh, or should have been, called as a cutoff.
The last place are going to be examples of legal contact. And here we're looking at the at the receiver closest to the screen, or rather B22, where you could argue that he's actually cutting off the receiver's path to the ball. But here he does it legally because he he's making a bona fide attempt to go for the ball. And when contact happens, another indicator right there is their shoulder to shoulder. And when that happens, they do have uh, equal rights to the ball as long as they're both going for the ball. And here I think it's, it's fairly clear that he is actually going for the interception, going for the ball. So this is a legal play. Another legal play, and again on the closest receiver here, giving us a good view. And there are really two contacts. The first right there is, is perfectly legal. The ball is not even in the air, so you can't have DPI when the ball is not in the air. And then the second part right there is, is when they're running side by side, it's really difficult to cut somebody off unless you are, are, are intentionally riding him out of bounds, which is not what happens here. Uh, the receiver is just uh, not able to get to the ball, but there really isn't anything to uh, to, to throw here. So uh, I, I hope this deep wing is throwing for something else. Now, it could be an arm grab, which we can't see from this angle, but certainly in terms of, of cutoff, this is not enough. Another legal play, another uh, play with the closest receiver. Uh, and he's going to go downfield and then the safety is going to bump into him like that. Now, initially you might say that that uh, the, the safety, he does move in front of him there and, and, and cut off his path to the ball and then there's a big collision. But what, what we have to remember here is the intent to impede uh, situation uh, that's that's the first thing so you, you he has to do this on purpose here I think they just kind of run into each other um, and and that's not a that's not a foul the other thing is right here is where the contact is and the quarterback still has the ball so this happens before the ball is thrown which is another indicator for us that this is not pass interference because as we all know can't have DPI uh, before the ball is thrown and, and when it's this close and you may not necessarily know uh, if, if the ball was in the air when the contact happened we're not going to uh, want DPI thrown we have to be we have to be sure for a, for a foul like this uh, before we want the flag down In this last play, we're looking at the, at the trips bunch here, and one of the receivers is going to go down the sideline, and he's our guy. So right there, he is he's going for the ball, and there is clear early contact, uh, and the receiver is pushed off his, his a chance to get to the ball. However, if we look at the cornerback here, or the safety or whatever he is, he is all the way he's going for the ball and and when he's making a bona fide attempt like this to go for the ball and there's you know essentially accidental contact there that is not pass interference again we go back to the intent to impede we would have to be able to say that the cornerback is backing up here uh, knowing that he's going to make that contact uh, and he's doing that instead of going for the ball just to make sure that the receiver doesn't get to the ball. And I just don't think that we can say this here when they're both going for the ball and we have contact uh, which is incidental, then that is not a foul. So that would be an, an incorrect call here for, for DPI cutoff because this is actually a legal play. That was the training tape for defensive pass interference cutoff. I hope you found something you can use on the field.